So Monte Carlos are great. Mm-hmm. Use them all the time in, in finance. But we use them on Tasty. I mean, we use them for the P50. Yep. And you've built many Monte Carlo models into the platform. Use them a lot. Okay. But you build... Because it's a very practical way yeah. of, of doing things. And you right? build a lot of those models for us. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go. Let's so see what this. Jacob's here, he, he's doing is he's making adjustments and using... Um, he's keeping some of his variables consistent to make it easier, but then he's making some small adjustments um, to to try to create randomness so that this is a... Um, to see how these trades would work over time, to look at the, the probability of loss on this. Okay. So do you want to take us through this formula here? Because w- w- this is just kind of, he's setting, he's setting the stage. Mm-hmm. He's setting the stage here. Yeah. yeah. So he, take he's, us through this. Yeah. So he's looking at the probability uh, of uh, a bankrolling, how much money you would need in the probability of loss with the wager and then how much of a bankroll you're using at each opportunity. And then you're looking at that long-term growth of that portfolio over time to experience what, uh, what, the, what the loss would be. But he's then saying, let's go to the next slide here. He's basically saying that we're, use, we're gonna use Monte Carlo simulations just to be able to uh, create- a Create more, enough occurrences. Yeah, to, create enough occurrences yeah. so that this is not just some, some theoretical formula that we can create something that is a little bit more like, like, like nature. Okay, let's go to the next slide, Beth. Okay. So here's the study. We use simulated data for the hypothetical pure Black-Scholes underlying with an initial price of $500 and a constant 16% volatility, assuming a 3% risk-free rate, just to set the background. Then consider two defined risk, 45 data expiration, short premium strategies. Shorting the um, 490, 510 strangle while doing the long strikes, either $5 or $20 away. So basically, some iron condor version that's $5 wide or $20 wide in a constant marketplace. And then we, because that's why, where we create the Monte Carlo simulation off that. That's right. Then we examine the five year performance of the portfolios beginning at 50 grand and repeatedly, repeatedly devoting. Given percentages, one percent. These are these are the allocations, right? That's right. One percent, five percent, and ten percent of the available capital as buying power to such trades, and then allowing them to trade fractional contracts. He's just trying to keep it easy, trying to right. keep the math easy. So, so in in based on what I understand about this, mm-hmm. okay, if it's a fifty thousand dollar portfolio, and I have not looked at this, the results of, of this. He's either using five hundred dollars all the way up to five thousand dollars on that fifty thousand dollars. That's right. And based on the research we've done in the past, I'm guessing it should be in that one to two percent range. Yeah, it should be the. And we're not trying to get too complex here when it comes to. So we're even allowing fractional amounts. Let's not, you know, let the truth get in the way here of 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 everything. We're just trying to keep as that's fine. realistic as possible. But this is a um, this is a theoretical study that he's doing here. So iron condors. One with a tight iron condor, one with a wide iron condor, which is similar to like a synthetic, and then 1%, 5%, and 10%. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing the answer is going to fall in that 1% range, but let's see. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a good-looking visualization here that he did. Okay. Um, what this is, is it showing it starting out at 50000 Yep. Right? You see that big red, that, that red right there, that's, and then it goes all the way out to 1,200 days, right? Yeah. That's the full number of, of studies. And then each one of his studies is actually going out to 1,200 days. He's starting out each one of these at $50,000, right? That okay. red is just showing where basically 50% of the data would fall between 75% and the lowest 25%. So anything between the 25%, basically one standard deviation in effect mm-hmm. worth of, of data is what he's showing. Okay. See that 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 flat number that's going to be the the ninety fifth percentile. So anything above that would be considered only happening five percent of the time. And that that flat number at the bottom, that's what would happen the lowest five percent uh, of the time, right? Okay. That's that's where if things don't go very well over time. Got it. That flat line is going to be the median, which is the number right in the middle of all the number of occurrences, and then the mean. Of course, the mean is going to get skewed upwards. But uh, you could say that the median, which is that that light red colored line, is kind of where you'd expect to be the most 
most amount of times. And so you can see it's a, it's been it's a profitable strategy overall um, when you're doing this uh, uh, this particular strategy. Okay, but this is, doesn't take into account the different allocations, does no. it? No. Uh, he, well, he's uh, so this one. He, he's going to show four this, different this charts. Is the, this is the one percent of capital, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's five five different charts here that he's going to do. Okay. okay. The first one was one percent. Right. And that was a five dollar wide iron condor. Okay. Then he's doing five percent. Okay. Yes. So five percent. There's actually a lot more uh, volatility here in this particular uh, strategy. You can see. Uh, you know, it's it's doing quite well, but the the volatility of of that movement has is quite a bit quite a bit greater. So uh, that five percent is can be really quite great, but then there's also uh, a higher likelihood it appears of of ruin, which is that lowest line, which is actually going below um, below where you started, even below zero. So there is a probability of ruin here. As the you, probability that, that grandma can't live out her money is what yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Gra grandma is going to be eating oh, cat Can food. you go back to the last slide, Beth, for one second? Oh, so, yeah. there's no so that's the 1%, right? Yeah. And there's actually no occurrences. There's no the probability of ruin here. Yeah, theoretical ruin. Yeah, theoretical. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Now I see. Now you bump it up. Yeah, I got that's it. That's 5%. Yep. And... Okay, now we have some probability of ruin here yep. that there's just a number of, of multiple occurrences of, of loss. Let's go to the next slide, Beth. 10%, now you even have a greater um, volatility of, of movement. So this is like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of how you view risk, right? Yeah, if you, it. yeah. yeah. I, I understand now. Now, mm -hmm. now it all makes sense. Now he's going to flip it up. So now he's going to go to a twenty dollar wide, which is the synthetic. Yes. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. I see. So this is basically just a strangle, right here. Yeah, it's like a synthetic strangle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're using one percent, and then you're using five percent. Yeah. The next, the next one, and you can see that that probability of ruin just gets greater. To me, what this is telling me is that you got to be more careful about making uh, making your bets when you increase the amount of, of uh, a capital in a particular trade. In, in effect, that's what it is. I mean, that's that's all we're looking at here, is that he's doing a really nice so way and a fancy away, way of... Is the takeaway risk of ruin? Let's see. Well, we can read it. It's on the Well, hold on. Page. Go to the next slide, Beth. So the Kelly criterion precisely answers an abstracted mathematical question about optimal bet size. While directly applying the Kelly criterion to option trading, um, is confusing and risky. The insight and the amount of capital devoted to a trade should scale with the size of the account. The probability of success and the ratio of payouts to losses is profound. So using Monte Carlo simulations, especially with iron condors, larger bet sizes had a better mean performance, but a riskier median performance. The riskier the trade, the more important it was to stay small. We could actually look at that through slides three, if you want to even look at a comparison between yeah, three. Yeah, let me finish this first. Okay. Let me go back to that, Beth. It remains to, ex it remains to expand these experiments to include various management techniques to consider trades with undefined risk. Remember, the more efficient the market, the smaller Kelly recommends keeping each trade um, while trying to make many of them. I mean... I got this now. Now I understand. So what they, what he, what he used is just basically lots of Monte Carlo simulations to help to validate the trade size. Exactly, and, and what you know kind of intuitively, right? Yeah. So he's using math to back up what you know intuitively. The yeah. more, the more that you risk on a particular trade, if you have a strategy that, if you have a strategy that's working, right, you should put more money into it, right? But there's always going to be a risk of of loss. So in a, in a risk of, of ruin, the more that you put it up. So even though these are strategies that over time they have historically worked, um, that median does go up. Yeah. Makes total sense. I understand it. It's actually a little, little more straightforward than I thought. Um, you just got intimidated by the graphs and, uh, and the formulas. That's all. You're all right. 